Uh, so while there weren't any earth shattering, other earth shattering reveals, the Xbox showcase did have a few surprises in store. Here they are. Here are our, sorry, non Starfield and non Silk Song highlights. So check out those clips if you want to see our coverage on Starfield and Silk Song. Uh, first up is one that I'm super excited about Hideo Kojima's cloud game with Xbox Game Studios. So Phil Spencer introduced a short video of Kojima talking about the cloud-driven title. Uh, Kojima, quote, It's a completely new game, one that no one has ever experienced or seen before. I've Good waited with the B-roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've waited a very long, day, long, long time, I think it was, when I could finally uh, start to create it. So there's also a rumor um, it's going to be called Overdose, starring Margaret Qua- Qualey, is that right? I'm mm-hmm. not sure. From Mama uh, in Death Stranding. I think actually the overdose thing is because, I, like, post this, uh, Kojima said he is going to be working with PlayStation. And there's always been, like, murmurings that, you know, he's he's working on multiple titles in his studio. So I don't think this is the overdose thing. I think this is the overdose thing. I think they're okay. also working on Death Stranding 2. I'd see. I don't even know if they're working on Death Stranding too. Like, I, well, or at I least heard... new, con- or at least new content for Death Stranding. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought they said I don't they think were. So no, Norman sorry, Reader but... said that he's. We're working on the second one, but he never played Death Stranding. He doesn't even know, like, what the game is really. Like, no. he, so he's super unfamiliar with it. So I reckon he could just be saying, "I'm working with Kojima again." You know what I mean? That like, blows my yeah. mind, man. I don't think I could ever be in a game and not play it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Dude, this like, people... whoa, dude, that's me. What the hell? Wow, that's Especially amazing. you, <laughs> like when you are the you feature face of the whole yeah. bloody thing. No, but know? dude, there's like it, this blows my mind even more. There's actors who don't watch the films. Wow. So like Harrison Ford is like, oh, no, I never watched uh, uh, Force Awakens. Well, <laughs> To right. be fair, to no, be it's fair, still, dude, that's kind of crazy. I never listen to our podcast, so I can kind of um, see that. So just there. just getting back on topic, like a lot of the reports I'm reading are pointing this to be. So what what's your what's your idea with this not being the cloud title overdose? No, I I think like the overdose one from what I and again I hate going into the rumor mill territory, but that seems to be more of a horror based thing, right? I don't know. Like, I, all I know is that I was just reading stuff leading, especially this week, because there's just been like so much of the, the show, like everything about um, this week leaked ahead of time. Mm. Um, and there was some stuff, people out there saying stuff that obviously didn't happen as well. But I just, yeah, I just remember like just reading stuff that was pointing that. But look, it is what it is. It's a name. It's a person in the game. We don't know what else that really alludes to, that whole overdose thing. Um, I think this is this is really cool because if there's anyone I could trust to come up with a really neat concept for using cloud technology in a game, it's Kojima. Like, given how he's used hardware in weird ways, yes. in, <laughs> in 4 4 breaking ways... And remind us well, of the most, probably the most famous, but one of the earliest ones with the uh, Metal Gear Solid. Psychomantis. Yeah, everything to do with the Psychomantis um, fight in, in Metal Gear Solid 1. But like, there's lots even in Metal Gear Solid 4 that people don't even remember. Like, mm. that game mm, is just has so many weird 4 4 breaking stuff in it. But look, I, yeah, I've, I think cloud technology and gaming is so we haven't even gotten close to what it could do for in terms of just cool stuff so. i don't think we've ever done anything this is like this is why well, i was flight, really flight simulator i think is the probably the best example of that <sighs> yeah a little bit but that's like that's so you know honestly that's like pong right like yeah sure you're moving yeah. paddles and there's two things but you know like people really haven't spent much time thinking about how they could take advantage of everything living on one computer and you're just tapping into that. Like that to me, like that's what I actually was excited about Stadia originally because, you know, people were actually leaning into that. You could make some really interesting new experiences. Mm. And I think that's where games always excel, that you can do things that you can't do anywhere else. Um, and it's an interactive medium. So for Kojima to be like super passionate, he's had this idea in the back of his head for ages. I always find that these auteur style people, if there's something rattling in their brain and then they finally get a chance to do it, it's always like spectacular. And it could be spectacularly bad or awesome as well, but 
you just find that like they get so passionate about it and i'm super interested in what this is going to be and it feels like it's a long way away feels like it's a long 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 way away. yeah there's nothing announced on it yeah the only thing i i have to add is margaret quayley reminds me too much of my mother when she was young and it makes me oh, really God. uncomfortable Mama, and she's called Mama in Death Stranding. And she's called Mama, which is really bizarre. So I'm playing Death Stranding, I'm like, oh my god, this is just weird. (laughs) Mama, mother, (laughs) mother. Oh god. Um, Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm super pumped about this. And honestly, this is like, I'll say this. If this is only playable on Game Pass, I'll resubscribe to Game Pass to play this game. That's how, like, excited I'll be about this game coming out. Uh, Other big news, and... Kind of a bit of a surprise for me, at least. I didn't know if this was rumoured or whatever, but Riot Games and Game Pass. So Riot Games uh, titles are joining Game Pass. Yes, all of them. So League of Legends, as well as all the champions being unlocked. League of Legends Wild Rift, again, all champions unlocked. Uh, Legends of Runeterra, Foundation Set unlocked. Team Fight Tactics, Little Legends unlocked. And then finally Valorant with all the agents unlocked. So on a fresh account, at most, these inclusions could cost up to 1500 US dollars. Uh, so League of Legends Wild Rift also marks the first mobile-only title to be avail- uh, added to Game Pass. So, But th- these are all still PC, or mostly PC, right, Swinney? So Wild Rift, I believe, is mobile-only. The rest, uh, yeah. some of them are PC and mobile. Um, now, that's on a technicality in, in terms of the first mobile Game Pass title because the games are free-to-play. So it's more, okay, it's an inclusion in Game Pass. It's So yeah. it's just... But to me, when I... I was... This completely came out of nowhere for me, and I'm not a fan of these games. I've, I don't no. think I've ever played any yeah, of their, I don't think, their games. Don't Valorant, think we're a, a Valorant, fan of MOBAs. <laughs> Valorant, well, Valorant's the closest one. That's 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 like you hero know, that's, shooter, that's a shooter. Yeah. Um, but it's like this came out of nowhere, and to me, this was in terms of new announcements, probably the biggest one on the show for me in terms of yeah. the impact it would it can potentially have because the community for these games, especially League of Legends of Valorant, are just absolutely massive, and the fact that essentially. You know, for anyone that's jumping in on a fresh account to say, well, you, you can either spend these, you know, like piece by piece and, you know, take forever to unlock or whatever you, the amount of money it takes, or you can just sign up to Game Pass. Like, it's a huge, I think, get for this. Now, it could turn out to be much of nothing, but I think this is a, a pretty big power move from, from Microsoft to align with Riot Games, considering how big they are. So, Yeah, look... When I first saw the Riot Games stuff, I was like, oh, shit. Are they, are they going to get League of Legends on Series X? I was like, that's kind of crazy if they do that, mm. which wasn't the case. Um, but I, I sort of don't really understand this. And maybe, uh, I don't know, Swinney, do you understand the technical detail? If I've already got a League account and I have would have made a lot of purchases, did, can I, like, unlock you know, the champions in League that I may not have unlocked but still retain my own account? You know I, what I mean? I mean, I imagine you'd, you'd be able to because okay. otherwise I'd be have a lot of very unhappy current players. Well, yeah, that's that, what I mean. You can't yeah. do that. Yeah, I think it would just be the case. You know, okay. they're not going to be able to get discounts based on stuff they've already purchased. But yeah, yeah, of course. That, that $1,500 amount, that's... I, I really emphasize the at most because mm. there's... You know, I'm not familiar with these games and all the methods you can go to to unlocking a lot of this stuff in, in, in different ways. But there were people out there doing calculations that if you essentially did the bare minimum and essentially just purchased, you know, f- f- like the almost like the wholesale price, not the wholesale, but like the RRP price, mm. then it's essentially getting close to that amount, um, which is a wild like amount of value for people that are into these games. That's a really good amount of value for into those yeah. games, yeah. Mm. And, but it would be, I think, uh, you're right. Like if they turn around, I think Valorant, for instance, Valorant on Xbox would be, you know, like a, a really good thing for them to get eventually because oh, yeah. that makes sense to me more than than a MOBA. But um, yeah, that, I think it was a really big announcement that I don't really care about, but I well, care about enough to talk about. So. I'll definitely play Valorant. Like I, I don't mind hero shooters. It just they've never fully clicked with me. Like I've always tried Overwatch. It's but, closer to yeah, but it's closer to like um, Counter Strike than Overwatch. Yeah, but it's that's a positive to me. That's a positive. Yeah, to yeah, me. yeah. So, yeah, and like honestly, the whole operator thing is the same as Rainbow Six Siege. 
it's like I, I feel like I just missed the boat, right? Like it, I keep trying to play Rainbow Six Siege, but there's so many agents to unlock, and I'm like, I'm not gonna spend you know two hundred dollars unlocking agents and not doing all this stuff. What are you doing, Mike? <laughs> by the way, Mike for, for people who are listening to the a hole audio, in his t-shirt <laughs> on camera, ripped a hole in his t-shirt. <laughs> Sorry, my cat put some holes in it and then I kind of made it a bit bigger. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just checking as well. It does seem like you're able to link your account. Hmm. So, which makes sense, right? That'd be insane if they didn't allow you to do that. No, because the thing is, like, just like the EA stuff on PC, like, this is all going to go through Riot's, like, infrastructure for yeah. this. It's just you'll obviously just link the account, as you yeah. said. So. Yeah. So you wouldn't play Valorant with me, Swinney? Look, you, you you struggle to get me to play games I want I know, to play. I <laughs> hey, I haven't said this, and this is a terrible place to say this, but I got I got Smash Digital. So Finally. now I'm playing more Why Smash. Why is that terrible? That, that's okay, isn't it? What's oh, it's that? random. It doesn't make any sense to say this right now. And I pre-ordered Splatoon 3 digitally. Oh, That's the first time I've ever pre-ordered a digital game. If, and it comes so up with weird discount? disclaimers. Yeah, there was like a what? discount. But it okay. comes up with weird disclaimers and timing. It's like you have, like, it has this diagram, and it goes, "You have to cancel your order one week before for it to be valid. Otherwise, you can't cancel it." And all this other shit. Yeah. It's like, Here so you strange. are, give me shit for pre-ordering a Kenko <laughs> digital game. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is like, come on, Splatoon Three is not going to be bad. We know that. So, uh, and there's reasons I'll explain after. Anyway, uh, huge news for me. I thought this was really, really awesome and kind of crazy, and also ruins one of my gifts that I gave Swinney last year for sure is Persona 3, 4, and 5 are coming to Xbox and Game Pass. Mm. So Persona 3 Portable is coming in 2023. Persona 4 Golden is coming in 2023 as well. But Persona 5 Royal is coming on the 21st of October 2022 on PC and console. I'm like, hmm, yeah. this is kind of cool. This is kind of crazy. Yeah, I think um, this really blew up. Like, I remember reading the reactions about stuff that was coming out of the show, and this was one of the biggest ones because yeah. people have been wanting this to come to PC in some form, and I yes. think people were really, really happy to also learn that it's it's also confirmed for Steam as well as uh, Persona 3, I think, because it was only Persona 4 Golden on Steam. I yeah, believe. correct. That's right. Yeah, and also the all the games will be available on PlayStation Five as well. So, which is I think this is all round great, yeah. except for Switch owners. Yeah, you know, well, they kind that, of got screwed a little bit. Well, that was the funny thing because there was a retailer that posted an image, and it, like they had a pre order for Persona Five Royal on the Switch, and I'm like, there's no chance that it's coming like at least anytime soon in the next year, let's say, because they would have just announced it post this. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, just as they did with Steam. So, I don't think that's happening. But I, no, it's mad. It's, it's really I good news. I wonder if the eventual hopeful Nintendo Direct, um, maybe, <laughs> they'll, maybe they've been told to not mention the Nintendo Switch. It's also come to Switch so that they can, Nintendo can announce it there. Maybe. That would be great. That would be the best case scenario, I think. So, it, Look, I know like I'm a bit more of a Switch stan, but for some reason, Persona 5 Royal... Just seems like such a perfect fit for the Switch. Yeah, I don't like such a perfect fit. The fact that it's not wasn't already on there, all the previous yeah. games. Just you know, they they put Shin Megami Tensei Five on there as an exclusive. <laughs> exclusive. And then they don't put the bloody Persona <laughs> games. You know, it's ah, oh, it's man, Japan. Yeah, it's different. You know, the way Atlas, is, Atlas is different. Well, Atlas is definitely different, man. Like Atlas has always been like that. You know, still Atlas games like from the SNES era can command like insane prices because they only sent like a thousand copies to Europe, <laughs> you know, and like it got sold out first week and that was it. You could never buy it from there and you'd never be able to play that game back in that era. It's like unbelievable. Um, no, but I thought this is huge, but what does this mean, Swinney? Cause I, like I selfishly, I bought you from my memory anyway, Persona 5 Royal for the PS4, given that you had a PS5. Mm, I remember that. Yeah. Now, have you played that? I have not played it yet, no. And you'll never play it. Let's be real. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see what the uh, the version of Xbox is like, and who knows? Like the thing is, I generally don't replay a lot of RPGs, but we'll see. <laughs> Probably a good we'll idea, <laughs> given we'll how long see. they are, especially so, Persona Five. Yeah. Are you going to follow a guide when you play Persona Five? 
I have no idea. I haven't even thought about that. Uh, okay. But <laughs> you've got to play just, it now that it's an RPG yeah. coming. And I'll Xbox. just say there was a listing uh, a while back. It may have even been late last year or early. Maybe it was early this year that for Xbox of Persona 5. So it's good. It took a long time for yeah. it to actually reach the actual announcement. But we obviously didn't know the other games either. So No, it was an awesome announcement. And you could tell when the really cool announcements were coming because Phil would be the one introducing them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he introduced this and he also introduced the Kojima one, <laughs> which I was like, I don't know if he introduced anything else, actually. I think it was just those two from my recollection. Mm. Um, and then also we had uh, Cocoon. So it's a new puzzle, day, a puzzle game from the ex-Play Dead designer, who, uh, Yepi Carlson. You reckon I'm glad that's you're right? saying that. I'm glad you're saying that. <laughs> So this is going to be released 2023 for PC, Switch, and Xbox consoles and Game Pass. I This was one of the favorite things I saw on the show just because it looks so different and just looked fun. Like <laughs> I'm just waiting for Mike to say anything about that imagery that we just saw on the B-roll. But... Yeah, no, Mike, we'll get back to your T-shirt, please. I, please. <clears throat> I have a um, clean mind. Thank you very but much. But just this <laughs> idea of you're, you're walking around with these like orbs that then mm. you can like seems like you go into them into different worlds and stuff it's just a real it looked cool unique and fun and that's all i can ask for for this mm. kind of game i think it's very like everything coming from these people you know behind limbo and inside just is very stylish oh yeah like it's unreal like they're just real like because there's another game that's coming from the other side of play dead right Yes, uh, which is also really stylish as well. So I can't remember the name of it, but yeah, yeah it's but that cl- looks closer to inside. Yes, um, yeah, it's more just, sort of side scrolling thing. Cannot remember the name of it. Which yeah, is, uh, Somerville, Somerville. That's what Somerville. That's right. Love yeah, that logo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I like the logo as well. It's really simple, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's really effective. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, uh, yeah, like yeah, it's one of those things. These the, these type of games. There's so many of them now. It has to be. So outstanding for me to go, okay, I've got time to play this. But that looked like, I've never played a game that looked like that before. So that's what really stood out to mm. me. Like it actually didn't look like, it looked new, you know, which is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the art style looks like um, Tunic. That's, that's sort of, kind but of I'm what saying I'm the exactly game, but the gameplay yeah. didn't look anything no, like that. Gameplay's games. different. That's what gameplay's I'm talking different. about. Yeah, definitely yeah. unique. No, no. It's really cool. No, no. And then finally. Ravenlock. Yes. Oh, so, I was waiting for this one. New action RPG from Echo Generation developers Coco Q. Cu- wait, wait. Coco. Cu- How do you say this? So, it's, no, I, I misspelled it. It's Coco Cucumber. Coco Cucumber. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Coco Cucumber. I'm like, I don't, what is this? Coco Cucumber. Um, yeah, so this is releasing uh, 2023 on PC and Xbox consoles under Game Pass. So, yes. Swinny. So we on the show, I was very vocal about uh, Echo Generation. Yeah. You know, leading up to the release, I was talking about how much I was looking forward to playing it. And then when it came out, I had fun with it. It had a lot of greatness to it, but it was also very flawed. Mm. But in there, to give Coco Cucumber a lot of credit, they did actually fix a lot of the issues that people had. You know, the, oh, okay. initially, the fact that you couldn't continue on past the, the like the point of no return, the fact that it was really unbalanced in the beginning. They actually addressed all of those issues. Um, hmm. But the different thing with this is, by all accounts, this is an action game. Now, I don't know if it's specifically an action RPG. It, I imagine it is, but Echo Generation was turn-based or like a Paper Mario style. So I'm I'm really keen to give them a, a second shot on this. Hmm. Um, it's, it, this it's, looks cool. Yeah, it has the same similar weird kind of like pixel voxel style that Echo Generation did. So, And the, yeah, it's pretty quick after the, the Echo Generation only came out like, late last year or something so it's pretty soon after i think so it must have been in the oven for a while mm. before that right? yeah they might yeah maybe they got two projects on the run mm. simultaneously or something like that uh was there anything else outside of the xbox highlights that we haven't whacked in here no i'll just say the last thing is just the thoughts on the show itself that i i stood up and i watched it and as soon as they announced which by the it, way just for people who are like because we have a lot of us people it was like 4 a.m in the morning for us yeah to watch it and, live. and as soon as i said every game in this showcase is coming in the next 12 months uh my anticipation or my expectations really dropped there uh, because 
you know you're not going to get many massive new announcements yeah. at that point. But with Xbox, look, it was bound to catch up to them at some point because over the last two years, they announced so many new games that are still on the way that you just can't keep adding to that pipeline yeah. so much. But I feel what was really missing from this show was a, was a lot of third-party heavy hitters. Now, they did have third parties represented, but it was like Diablo. It was kind of like games that... Again, they weren't new reveals, and I think that that was really missing for me. It's like you didn't have something on the level of... Because um, I think Elden Ring, I think the very first trailer, I think was at Xbox. I think mm. the very first one was... Oh, the very first trailer. The very first trailer. So I'm fairly certain it was. But anyway, they, you didn't okay. have any new third party. So mm. I was a little disappointed there, but there was a lot of cool stuff shown overall. So mm. It's weird because you're the Xbox stand, but I actually... To me, I'd almost like say this is like a nine and a half out of 10 because I was so sick of Xbox just hyping up new games and, oh, here's this game that's coming. Oh, here's the perfect dark, blah, blah, blah. And when they were like, oh, this is going to be almost all gameplay coming out soon on Game Pass. I'm like, and pretty much everything's on Game Pass is on PC and like console, like Series mm. X. I'm just like, fuck, this is good. I like this. I was actually like... Yeah. It, weirdly enough, the opposite of you. I was like so happy. I didn't stay up to watch it. So I think if I'd yeah. stayed up, maybe I'd live, be a little bit more wide like you because it's like, yeah, for sure you're not going to get any major new re reveals. But they did a lot of really smart things. Like even for me, you know, the flight sim update and how they're going to have uh, like from Halo. Well, how, not, not the World Cup. What's it called? Yeah. What's Pelican. the Halo ship called? The Pelican. The Pelican. The Pelican that said, yeah. And uh, man, like they, they fucked up halo infinite so hard but I, I i'm shocked at how much nostalgia i have for the halo series even just playing mostly just halo 3 when the music kicked in and like it started to pop up i'm like fuck that's so cool <laughs> like i was like fanboying out on it i was like damn that was cool that's just they had like lots of different things like i don't play sea of thieves i've never played one minute of it but i love that trailer for season seven, like really, really well executed, really, really funny. Diablo four, like I'm guessing it's going to be by the time it comes out on Game Pass, right? Like they couldn't confirm that. That's but... what I was wondering too. Yeah, yeah. They didn't confirm it or say anything, but possibly, yeah. I'm, I I'm hoping so. too, and I think it's cross platform as well, so you can yeah. play with people on PC. I mean, um, I think that decision will really rely on you know, like obviously the acquisition coming, yeah, coming yeah, the timing line and, and everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. The um the Pelican, by the way, uh to to those it's it's already out, so you can already fly it, I think is a yeah, yeah. pretty much right after the um the announcement. Um it's really cool because apparently you can hover with it. So a mate kept sending me shots of different houses and stuff that or different places <laughs> that I know of. Because you can just fly That's to it and just funny. hover and stop. Which normally in a game you can't because you can't they're planes. You can't just, you know, stop mm. a plane in midair. But you can't no, uh, I think you, you can. can go yeah, you can, because you can go into drone drone mode. And yeah, stuff yeah, because like I've done that before, yeah. Yeah, but the problem is my plane was still flying while I was in drone mode and then it went and crashed somewhere. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, where's my plane? <laughs> <laughs> so no, like overall cool. like I think they did a really good job. Uh, to me, out of all of the presentations i think the playstation one was the strongest i know that wasn't like technically whatever you want to call this period of time not e3 but um i think that was the strongest but i honestly think the xbox showing was up there with the sony one just didn't have the exciting sort of new reveals and things like that so all right let's move on from xbox and move into 